Syllabus Stop Point 2.2 The Inextricable Connection of the Dreaming, the Land and Identity Our to-do list To investigate the inextricable connection of the dreaming, the land and identity Inextricable means impossible to separate from something else It's same as using the words linked and tied such as an inextricable knot that you cannot separate or untangle. Here we learn that these three things, the dreaming, the land and identity, can never be separated when learning about Aboriginal spiritualities. Pause this video now to define the three words in the glossary box and try to put the word inextricable in your own sentence. If you've ever seen the Australian film The Castle, you'll know that Daryl Kerrigan is outraged when the government tries to take his home away from him. In this clip from the movie, he humorously compares himself to the Aboriginal peoples. And although what Mr Kerrigan is going through is vastly different to what Indigenous Australians have suffered through, we can still take something away from what is said. So pause the video and watch the small clip from the castle. In the clip, he says, Our house is like their land. It holds their memories. The land is their story. It is everything. You can't just pick it up and plonk it down somewhere else. For Aboriginal peoples, the land is inextricably connected to their identity because it contains the stories and memories of the past which shape the present and the future. Now this is particularly important when you look at the effect of dispossession in the HSC course. It's really important to draw back to this preliminary content in the HSC and discuss the inextricable connection to the land and the importance of land for Ab Aboriginal peoples. Because in Aboriginal culture, the land is multifaceted, meaning that it has many different aspects. And people can't be disconnected from the land because they then lose their identity. So hold on to that for the HSC. If you look at each of these images, you will notice that the land is a common feature to all. Whether it would be the caves, the rocks, or the leaves, or the orange soil, these all come from the land. The land is the physical medium or you can say the canvas which Aboriginal peoples lay out and draw their identity to communicate things through. The most common thing they communicate is the dreaming. Their identity is shaped by the dreaming. And since their spirituality exists in the past, present and the future, the land allows for it to be captured by paintings, by markings, all the creation stories, they are put on the canvas of the land. Pause this video now and try and guess what is happening in each picture. Write down a few words or a sentence in your exercise books to explain. Do this for the next couple of slides. Imagine going to all the places where Jesus walked the earth. For Christians, these places in Israel are considered the holiest places. Song lines for Aboriginals are similar to this ID. Just look at the first image here. A song line or a storyline is the path or corridor along which a creator ancestor moved to bring country into being. It is a geographical expression or a landmarking of their songs, dances and paintings animating its country, bringing it to life as they rewalk the steps of their ancestors. These song lines also provide them with navigation to food resources, allow for sacred rites and ceremonies to take place and so on. 
In the second and third picture, we can see cave paintings and art. Cave paintings and rocks are a common land feature that Aboriginal peoples used to communicate the Dreamtime stories of how the world was created, featuring knowledge about the spiritual ancestors. Children would be educated by the elders of the tribe by looking at the art that communicates the creation of the world and the rules and the responsibilities and ethics are learned through these stories and hence this shapes their identity as an Aboriginal person. The smoking ceremony, which you can see in the last image, is a traditional Indigenous custom which involves burning plants and creating smoke and it's believed to cleanse the air and ward off bad spirits. And this is often used to welcome new people into country. So when a person physically enters uh, the land of a, cer a certain Aboriginal community, they are welcomed normally with a smoking ceremony. There is also a distinction between different types of land for Indigenous Australians. Thinking firstly from a Western perspective, in a Western society, people wouldn't celebrate a wedding on top of a cemetery. And therefore, in Indigenous culture, there are also different parts of the environment, the physical environment, the land, which holds significant meaning but only serve one purpose, such as burial land. So there is a distinction between what parts of the land can be used for burial sites, what parts of the land can be used for ceremony, and what parts of the land can be used for other purposes, such as going out hunting or gathering, for example. A good example of this is the waterhole. It makes perfect sense not to bury people so close to a natural resource because firstly you don't want that resource being contaminated but also because it has a, serves a different purpose to the community. In the top right of screen you can see a set of symbols that serve as navigational markings and just like Google Maps for a Western society these help Aboriginal peoples and Aboriginal communities gather and navigate through the terrain. So in this case, the symbol represents a campsite and it's really just indicating to other people, possibly even those from outside of the community, that there is a campsite nearby. So for those people that don't know how to get there, just like we would look for little symbols and signs along our journey if we're going somewhere, we have a look for these symbols and signs that represent a campsite or a water, water hole or things like that. You probably guessed that Uluru in the bottom left of screen is a sacred site which is sacred to Indigenous Australians from that part of Australia. But the person inside that image is also enacting some sort of storytelling because you can see that that person has been covered with some paint, some body paint, which is a form of symbolism as well. And so that person is probably telling the story of, of a hunter hunting something, whether it's a kangaroo or any other animal. And in the last image, we see an Indigenous Australian undergoing this process of bush regeneration. So certain plants in Australia, scientifically, we've now discovered as, as a Western society, that these plants need fire in order to regenerate and to grow again. However, the Indigenous Australians have held this knowledge for tens of thousands of years and have used that knowledge to regenerate the bush and to, to grow certain plants, to clear off certain other plants that, that possibly don't contribute to their community, so they are, they're plants that they don't eat or they're plants that don't serve a purpose, so they push back those plants and clear off the land so that other plants may have a chance to grow. The sacred relationship of Aboriginals and the land. The activity here will allow us to see the difference between Western culture's relationship with the land and Aboriginal people's relationship with the land. You are to contrast the relationship between these two in the boxes provided you can draw this up in your exercise books. 
put down about three dot points for each and use adjectives, descriptive words and really have a think about how different these two worlds are in relation to their link with the land. These are some answers that you can have a read through and add to your notes. So Aboriginal relationship with the land. The land is a vessel for their dreamtime stories to be communicated through. So on cave paintings, on rocks, through song lines. Um, the land can be used as ceremonial and burial dwelling places. The land is the stage for dance and song. It is the canvas for artworks. And Aboriginal peoples navigate their way through the land markings, so using symbols to direct people of the tribe to certain land resources, like water holes or certain food supplies, water supplies, etc., Aboriginal people also believe that the land owns them. So they only take what they need in order to survive. This stands in stark contrast to non-Aboriginal peoples and the Western view of the land. Western society is much characterised by the consumeristic, destructive and mechanical use of the land. They take and they take resources in large amounts because they value money and comfortable living and taking more than what is needed, um, building properties on the land, um, and they navigate their way through technologies such as Google Maps. For the next activity, please consider the following words, dreaming, land and identity, because they form the basis of the next clip that you're about to watch. So as you're watching that clip, just take a few notes on those three topics. The man in this clip talks about how the land owns us, and so he speaks about how the land existed long before any human that's walking the earth now, and it will continue to exist long after any plant, animal or human has passed that's currently alive right now, um, the land hopefully, we can assume, will still be there. So pause the video, watch the clip and just make a few dot points on those three topics, dreaming, land and identity. The inextricable connection of the dreaming, land, and identity. Inextricable means something that is impossible to disentangle or to separate from. The dreaming is physically expressed. It is the physical medium through the land. You cannot separate the two. Example one, the land is where the dreaming and its stories take place. The land is also the resting place for their ancestral spirit beings that are featured in Dreamtime stories. Lastly, sacred sites carry with them ritual responsibilities for the Aboriginal community. Thus, the identity of an Aboriginal person can be said to be inextricably linked with the land. Each person really has the potential to have their own sacred site because in many Aboriginal cultures, as a mother becomes conscious of the first movements in the womb when she falls pregnant, when, she, when the baby first starts to move around and, and kick and things like that, the mother has to pay immediate attention to where she was when that took place because it is believed that based on where she was, the spirits of her ancestors or the spirits of her totem animal or the spirits of her totem plant have energized the infant in the womb. And that child 
from that point on becomes inextricably linked with the spirits that are associated with that area. So you can see that, you know, whether there was an, a certain animal or a certain plant that was around, the spirits of the ancestors are considered to be lingered in that, in that place and therefore they've energized the woman and they've energized the child within her womb and that child is linked totemically to that place and to those animals and those plants. Aboriginal peoples regard the land as a mother. The land is nurturing, it is resourceful, it sustains their life. Totemism is a system of beliefs in which humans are said to have kinship, a mystical relationship with a spirit being, such as an animal or a plant. The entity or totem is thought to interact with a kinship group or an individual. Balance rites are ceremonies that increase the reproduction of a particular animal, which represents an ancestral being from the dreaming. Pause this video now and research totemism and balance rites. And write down two dot points for each. Certain animals or plants that have this totemic relationship with a certain indigenous culture or, or group or language group cannot be eaten but may be eaten during ceremonial times. So typically if you're if you consider yourself a kangaroo person or a crocodile person, um, which is what they may refer to themselves as, if that is their totemic totemic animal, then a crocodile person won't eat crocodile, a, a kangaroo person won't eat kangaroo, but may during ceremonial times, these special times in their life. Now that you've heard from us and that you've watched that short clip earlier, we'd like you to draw a mind map around the word land. And use this mind map to show how the land is the medium through which all things related to the dreaming are expressed. And there's just some advice down the bottom of the screen about how to create a mind map. So pause the video and draw a mind map around the word land. So in summary, the dreaming is a term used to refer to the concept which underpins all beliefs and practices in Aboriginal communities. And so the dreaming represents all knowledge and understanding within an Aboriginal society. The dreaming also, having this knowledge and this understanding, helps to determine relationships and responsibilities for Aboriginal people. It helps them to understand their connection to the land. It helps them to understand their responsibility in terms of looking after the land and looking after other people and even in terms of marrying other people and forming relationships with other people. And also the dreaming is a meta-temporal um, concept so it incorporates the past, the present, and the future into one complete reality. So when we're talking about the dream time, which is a different word, the dream time is speaking mainly about the past. And it's talking about the time when Aboriginal ancestor spirits existed. Whereas the dreaming is something that's always present. It's present now. It talks about the past but it's also so linked to the present and the future. Some summary points. The dreaming is inextricably linked to the land, as the land is the physical medium through which the dreaming is communicated. It is from the land that the dreaming flows with stories of ancestor spirits, which explain different aspects of creation. For Aboriginal communities, the telling and learning of the dreaming stories is a lifelong process. The dreaming is communicated through art, song, dance story and ritual. If you'd like to know more about Indigenous Australians, now that we're at the end of the preliminary content and considering you'll also need to know a little bit more about Indigenous Australians, 
for the HSC course, then I highly recommend that you visit the Australian Museum. They have a permanent exhibition on um, the first Australians and there's a lot of great resources as well that you can access through their website. So if you can't physically make your way to the Australian Museum in Sydney to ha get a hands-on experience with some of these concepts, then the website should be able to be a little bit more helpful as well. The two YouTube links that you can see on the screen are two documentaries that go for around about an hour long but give a really in-depth understanding about everything we've spoken about. Take a look at the quote that's on the screen which is taken from one of the documentaries and if you just pause the video now try to work out what that quote is saying and how we can link that to what we've talked about in terms of the dreaming and Aboriginal spirituality. Once again, there are some revision questions that you are more than welcome to answer. This is a bit of an extension activity. And if you do answer those questions, please send them on to your teacher. They should be able to provide you with some feedback around how you can improve if necessary.